Hey folks, it's Kitsu, and while Steam is doing this free preview of Sunless Sea, I decided to try out Sunless Sea. I was actually going to go to bed and get some rest, but you know what? The hell. Since I've only got two days to play this and test it out and see if I actually want to purchase it, I figured, what the hell. Get it over with! Give it a preview! Any game that involves madness is really kinda in my wheel well. And cannibalism. Okay, let's choose a past. was lost at sea. You'll never know him, but you often dream of him. Find him return his remains to London for a decent burial. Fulfillment. Gather a hundred tales. Learn all you can in the Z. Write a masterpiece. Retire. Hmm. Sounds nice when you say it. Wealth. You know how it is to be poor, now you want a mansion, servants find clothes, a family perhaps, as long as they don't take your money, or a private kingdom, establish a colony where you are absolute ruler, a utopia perhaps, perhaps, can't choose that now, damn you, uh, let's go looking for a hundred tales. Okay, this is a lot of reading. It's one complaint I have already. I just want to pilot a sub. Okay. Let's go ahead and call me my lord. Continue. Okay. Choose your name. Subby. I am Subby Sub Sub of the Sub Sub Subs. Let's go ahead and. Again, reading. Reading. <laughs> God. I just want to play the game. Chipyard. Yay. Okay. Can we go? This game is already confusing me. I don't like being confused. <laughs> Thank you. I can buy fuel supplies, ship equipment. Can I leave when I buy things? But anyway. Cool, I even have a mascot. Comatose ferret. Mostly it's mobile. Occasionally it's feral. That's good. <laughs> okay. Again, why would you start the game like this? I 
my expiratory bit. Why? Let me weave. <gasps> it's a miracle. It, why would you do that to somebody? I mean, God, I understand storytelling's okay, but I want to move my boat. Not doing anything. Not going anywhere. Uh, launch. Yes. Thank you. Finally. Oh. Now this is what I was after. Gameplay. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like lore. But make it optional. Don't force me to sit there and read and read and read. I need to be playing the game. And I'm not just saying that from, you know, a snide, ooh, this is a free game, I'm going to tear it apart kind of thing. No, if I am going to apply rules to this, it's the same rules as you have in film. Show don't tell. I, do I care about reading about the backstory of the London Flats and how they became giant underground cockroach havens? No, I just want to play the game. Th that's the fun, playing the game. And if you don't have the investment of knowing about your ship and being out there and controlling it and wanting to upgrade, you're not going to want to play the game. That's just me. You've encountered an opponent. Red Ark shows range of your deck gun. Keep the enemy in range while your crew works out a firing solution. This will happen faster if you keep the enemy in your prow light. The deck gun will be highlighted as your crew make progress toward a firing solution. Cool. screwed. <laughs> this is what I get for wanting to fight something so quickly. See, I don't mind this because it's actually telling me about something that's happening. Let's make a sacrifice. <laughs> I 
I really wish these guys would stop being so aggro. I mean, don't get me wrong, I did shoot at one, but I didn't exactly hurt it. Massy Shaft. Okay, there's a name. you, friend or foe? Pirate? Yes! Dear God, I'm not in the mood to get a tutorial lesson right now when I'm getting shot at. Scuttle. Cool. <laughs> cool. Go ahead, and I can't repair. Please, the bat. Talk about lights. a lot of stuff, but I have a feeling I'm almost out of everything, because I have 7 out of 75 hull. Can I stop here? Is this an actual place? So you got a bridge going all the way over here. Maybe they have I can tell you right now, this is an addictive little game. Just playing. I mean the mechanics feel really nice. Yeah, I don't really agree with the whole Plugging somebody down the text in the beginning, but once you actually get playing the game and you figure out the mechanics, which your tutorial is horrible. Oh, there we go. A dock. Please be a dock. Be a dock I can dock at. Circle of life. First off,
Blue Jack. It's all cool, but okay, I'm not finding anything. Got seven fuel and three food. No idea how much I have because I can't really tell. Okay, so I have seventy. Speak. The Navigator likes to talk about the Z. He has long opinions of its beauties, its dangers, its salinity, its depth, and its contents, and the rest. Every other sentence starts with the Z. Z, Z, Z. After a while, you reach the point of semantic saturation. And the word Z means no more you than the world zop. But you seem to have learned something. <laughs> okay, cool. I have no idea what mirrors or secrets or anything else in this game is. It's never been explained. So, I don't know. I'm going to talk to the ferret. Play with my ferret. A rat, the ferret, rises like a serpent and strikes across the room like a discharged spark, at least in theory, it does. In practice, it orients its head towards the rat, which disappears instantly in a puff of squeak. It lies across your desk like a lumpy scarf. Now you see, it's stuff like that that I like. I like the world building, and I like the cute little dialogue and stuff, but at the same time, it's so buried in this UI, it feels like it's just trying to suck the life out of me. I mean, yeah, it's functional, but dear God. I mean, if you're going to make it look like a book, make it look like a book, not like a book with graphics pasted on top of it, like an old 90s game. I'm just grumpy. <laughs> That's all it is. I'm just grumpy. I thought I could actually repair my ship here, but apparently that's beyond my means. There's no way to actually get a hold of anybody, so let's take a look. Got a deck gun. Got no way of knowing how to do anything here. Got cargo, I don't know how to sell it. I'm 
definitely not gonna sell off my freaking fuel and my supplies. An unstamped crate of human souls. Nice. Okay, again, no shipyard. No way to fix my ship. I've only got that many left. I'm just going to go ahead and launch. And I can't really get rid of my navigator. He's got to navigate. You know what I can do though? I can go back to London. If I can make it past these wonderful crab monsters that seem really, really intent on killing me. Fed the crew. didn't take this long last time, is it because I'm so damaged? It's always nice to see a red gleaming something. just completely miss London or okay there's a port I know something of the Untersea. I don't know anything about the game, but the Untersea, yes, yes, I know. Okay, that looks familiar. This is the end of me unless I find a board. Five. 
We're gonna put it for some hot ears. Nice. It's the first nice thing that's happened so far. Doesn't help. <laughs> I have one health. And another damn freaking thing right there. Shops. We're going to buy fuel. Buy fuel. And buys, buys. Yes, yes. You are going to go here. Apparently, I can't repair this thing. So, most likely, I am going to die. despite the fact that uh, the ship is now shipwrecked. Yay! <laughs> so, yeah, definitely completely lost at how to play this game effectively, but at the same time, it's really fun and really addicting, and I can see once you learn how everything works that it might actually become one of those games where you actually look forward to reading all the little screens and everything else, but dear god, that beginning is horrible. I mean, talk about just completely killing this mood.
So, I guess I've got to go slip beneath the waves now. <laughs> yeah, I'll be remembered in song. He didn't know how to pilot a ship. He couldn't fix anything. Let's go ahead and try this again. Okay. Three decades ago in the reign of Victoria, London was stolen by bats. Now it lies a mile below the surface. It was dreadfully inconvenient for everyone, but it opened a vast black ocean to you. Welcome to the Anthocene. Now you see, just a narrator, anything to draw you in. Like I said, I'm probably just being grumpy. Looking at it now, it doesn't seem as bad as it did. So I'm taking the first one. Yay, and it got me a different cool person. Sweet. Who are you? You're now a captain. Now you belong to the undersea. But who were you before? A street urchin. Your urchin gang cast you out when you grew too tall. Little lamplight all over again. You took to the sea rather than graduate to larger crimes. That last big score was enough to buy a ship. This will give you bonus to veils, which I still have no idea what they are. The skill of subtlety and evasion. What does that tell me? Low cunning on the high sea. Your friend in the long shanks knows little of gunnery. Only a little, but she can help. Okay, so I can talk to her, it says. Let's go to the wealth. I wish to be called... Captain. Captain, Captain, irregularity in the harbor master's office. They wish to know what term of address. Make you call me Captain. Okay. So, let's talk to Longshanks. Why can't I talk? Oh, okay, I have to choose my name, sorry. This time we will be... 
Corn Holy Altar. For Corn Holy, I'll need TP for his bomb. The Labyrinth of Tigers is open under the patronage of the London Zoological Society to cautious visitors for educational purposes. Here, you may see the devil apes of Farm and Lay, the thing in the mirror, the cantagonist as children, the gargantuan cave snake, the inhabitor of wolves, the hybrid fiend, envy the magnificent recommends that you arrange your exit well before closing time. Okay. <laughs> Prepared a rare creature labyrinth. Sweet. Or purchase a live specimen. Okay. So those are both locked, but that's still interesting. Let's go to London. Oh, this is where I completely checked out last time. Let's see if I can do it. London, she's the greatest city of the undersea, and don't you forget it. Visit the Admiral's survey office. They'll pay for information from the captains. Find out what and how. Visit the university. I, everything I would want to do is locked. Hire on more crew. Yes. Says both sailors are looking for a safe run to the Tone Colonies, or at least a sane run to the Southern Archipelago. You will need to buy drinks, spread around hiring fees, and look for daredevils. Hmm. You the dry, dry dark, dry dark. This is so obnoxious. There was none of this spelled out to me before. I could have repaired my ship if I would have known about that. An immigrant will pay to be taken north. Hmm. So, first place, let's hire. Sweet. Continue. We're going to go down here and we are also going to pick up a passenger. Okay. It's oddly difficult to die and fall in London, but when a Londoner is too tatty and wretched to live, they wrap themselves up in bandages and take ship for the Tung colonies. Your crew cart these on, ones on board and pad and coffins. They'll sleep there until the journey is done. Cool, so I have to go to Ventfrey and sell them there. Okay, Admiral, what do you want? Let's see. Speak to our agents there in return. We'll see what your reward is. This is for below. From Gators Moored in the Corsair's Forest. Okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and leave. Oh. Let's go to the shops. We've got 30 left. At least they've got some shops here. Torpedo components, but not torpedoes. Fuel for ten, supplies for twenty. Go 
just to be smart, I'm going to buy one and one. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave lunch. Now, he did say he wanted to go north. So before we head into sea monster territory, Yay! Look ahead. Up. Now, hopefully, in this game, up is north. Hello, Barnet. Interesting. Cool. So we do have a chart. Okay. Okay, Pirate Steam Pinnacle ship is yours. We're going to do with her. Let's go ahead and take what we can. Sweet. Two more supplies. At least I'm getting some exploring in. Can't spiss. It's usually around where sea monsters show up and then chase me relentlessly. Fog. That's not a good sign.
dark. <laughs> Codex, a desperate cave full of mute exiles and an ex inexplicable colony of shivering bad-tempered monkeys. I like that. Okay, on fuel and supplies. Still don't have anything to show for it. So at least we ain't hurt. Let's go ahead and launch. I gotta get my mummy to its location. Holy crap and a hat. Four hundred? No, 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 no. I don't want to fight for Mr. Lifeberg. Do you want to build a snowman? Just try and catch me now. The sensor's arch. Don't get me wrong, I'll fight something if it's got 20 or 30 or 70. I ain't gonna fight something that got 400 freaking hit points. These are waters around the tomb colonies. Sweet, I found the tomb colonies. If I can find a porch. There we are. Dunk. Trouble with tomb colonists. You brought this decaying emigrant earth. Now what? How about the emigrants? Your tomb colonist passenger yanks off the bandages. She looks remarkably healthy. I'm not dead as I look, and I won't get ashore without your help. No, I'm gonna help her. Okay. Slip your furtive cap passenger past skin check post and the confirmation of consolation. Thanks, Captain. Let me teach you a couple of tricks. Sweet. Got lots of veils. Okay. Tomb colony. Okay, the tomb colony of Venderbright. On deck, you can hear the sound that a thousand bandaged dead make as they shuffle and cough. It's something like the world's most restless concert audience, or the world's most plague-ridden cathedral. 
the dusty glass of wine, unlocked, not even gonna look at it. Explore Vendor Bright. Here, they favor candlelight over gaslight. The shadows are swaggering like cobwebs. The tomb colonists stand still enough to be mistaken for sculpture until they laugh or cough. One building in three seems abandoned. Ooh. Okay. And on orthodox technology, sweeter scents draw you into a shop that sells candles, lilac, lavender, honey. We fall into a discussion of their manufacture with the shopkeeper. Yes, she says, proudly displaying her missing arm. We render ourselves into a good end. Oh, don't look like that. Our fats are a finer quality than any other, and we grow tired of our bodies down here. That's disgusting. <laughs> Okay. This is the first curator. The captain of the first curator gives an audience. The first curator is responsible for the preservation of the tomb colonies. It has been here much longer than London and is the oldest tomb colonist. But even tomb colonists dissolving in, its time is close. Let's go ahead. No more light. The obsequious steward cautioned you. The curator is terribly afraid of moths. Like the sci-fi moth. He opens the door and you step into near darkness. A pair of luminous lamp lighter bees buzz in a latticed ivory tube. There's no other source of light. A bandaged shape no larger than a child's lies. Crumpled on the couch. It lifts its head with obvious effort. It takes several seconds for you to distinguish its voice from the soft buzz of the bees. Listen to a whispered request. See captain's skin. Not much left of me. I will go into the grand sanatorium. Bring me colors. Seven colors. Pay well. Where I can ask him at the grand sanatorium. Okay, we'll listen to the request. Seven colors, Cosmogone, Irigo, Peleguin, Stuart has a list. Find them and... <laughs> oh, great. Let's go ahead and ask about the sanatorium. Oh, Silskin, you don't want to know. Chuckling becomes a cough. We don't die here below, not unless we go to Z. So we need something else somewhere at the end. To end. Okay. We'll go ahead and do his color things. Okay, thank you, this four flesh first for colors. It collapses rustling back on the couch. Even the effort of speaking seems to have diminished it a little. While the audience is over, as the door opens, it shrinks from a finger of light that reaches across the floor. Outside, the obsequious store nods. The book, yes, the book. He enters a slim, illustrated volume. The curator's old, old as dust. We will be all grateful if you would do this one last favor. I have no idea what that entails, but we shall see. Let's go ahead and hear gossip. After all, what can a bunch of mummies gossip about? Along the coast of the Untersea, it's remarkably hard to die. The decrepit and nearly dead who leave London become tomb colonists. But they don't give up and their ties to their home, their politics, you gather complex clues, da 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 da. Cool. Okay, let's go to the shops. I've got a lot of money now. Can't sell my tomb colonist because she already left. We're going to go ahead and buy, buy. Bye bye. 
Yeah, we'll go to seven. There we go. And hold. Distant battles. It just means that there's something to find. Moody's light. Spider silk in London, of course. There are troubles with the sorrow spider infestation like anywhere in the Neath. But for real quality, you need to go east to Conte, with the fang bristling fastness of Savio's Rock. This looks pretty freaking cool. Bonnie Reefs. Don't want to hit a reef. Let's go ahead and do it all clear until we spot somebody else. Which, you never know with this game, it could be a pirate right around the corner. Or a monster. Oh, there's a monster. Let's see what it is. Holy crap, Nat. What are you? Western Angler Crab. Okay, you want to come after me? That's fine.
Okay, Miss Triangler Crab. You're gonna be the biggest thing I've taken down, I think. I don't want to dissect it, I want to butch it. supply for killing that and I have X and unrepossessing mass I have no idea what the hell it is here it is there's a probability something horrible inside but there's possibility is not <laughs> can probably preserve this to eat at your leisure Playing it improve the board, you'll gain nothing. Do each more self retort perfect. We're gonna smoke it. Okay. Okay, repair ship available if your hull is 50% or better. <laughs> Demio Island. Okay, I have to take it back. I'm really, now that I've actually gotten used to it, I'm really enjoying the interface. It really is a little more immersive than I gave it credit for. It's just, without a proper tutorial to get you introduced to these things, and doing a little pop-up thing in the corner, it's not a proper tutorial. I mean, just... Hold hands a little bit more. It's not a big deal. But uh, now that I'm into it, actually, the lore and all the clever writing is really good in this game. And I think that's why people are so enamored with it the fact that it's actually very, very rich. Iron and Misery Company Funging Station. INM has a funger operation here, felling giant Boligus. Shrooms for building materials. Harvesting Cura Lee for its medicinal properties. It is a desperate little outpost of something like civilization. Up puffs an affable factor. Oh, hello, Captain. Thank God for visitors. We'd go quite mad out of there otherwise. <laughs> quite mad. How can we be of assistance? So. We can go and have some tea. Yeah, let's go have some tea. Tea with a factor. The poor fellow needs a company and he can spare an hour away from his schedule. You sit in a veranda in the factor's house, looking out over the fungal garden jungle. Sorry. An expanse of green and sour gold, the air is thick with hovering spores, the scones are stale, and even the tea is a hint of mildew. But the factor is a is good company. He shares odd stories of the ice and the roses of Irem, the monstrosity of the Sea of Lilies, and a little restaurant in Vanderbright where he enjoyed the most extraordinary seafood. Vanderbright, I know. I'd never met a tomb colonist who could cook. But you must visit the place. Do you know it? He also has a load of 
bogus frond carded warrior ship. You wave your wave your things. I have eaten so much of the stuff I fear I might be transformed entirely into fungus. He leans confidently toward you. It happens, you know. But one does not have to eat rather than not of it first. Okay, so let's go back to the fungal station. Let's compile a port report. <laughs> Gather supplies. Some of the island's fungus is good to eat. Some is poisonous. Hallucinogenic or mischievous. Good luck. Oh no. A fung of dread. The spores lie thick on your face. You coat your tongue. One crewman begins to whimper. Oh Christ, he says. They've reached my heart. I think I'll be harvest yet. Harvest yet. You drag him back to the ship before he's calm again. You've gained five times terror, and you are much better luck next time. That's cool. Let's go again. <laughs> cool, we got one supply. No more terror. We can go again. Spores again. Go again. Damn. Go again. <laughs> oh, my terror is horrible. Yay! One more supply. Cool. So, so far we've freaked the hell out of our guys. Oh, yeah. Let's speak to our little friend. All right, Captain. What do you want me to shoot at now? <laughs> what is my iron? Yeah, go for it. Why did you come to the Zee? I like... It's like the flitted Z, right? No one to tell you what to say or do. And no one to kick you downstairs. You just tell you a little bit too tall. I'll be a faithful officer, but put me ashore to shed it and I won't forget you. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead. Definitely need fuel. Hmm. We'll take our chances with that. Creeping tendrils of fungus, seaweed, unnameable flora. We enter the snares. Did 
definitely digging the music. Yeah, I'm getting the feeling that this is not a good place for me to go, but I'm going to go here anyway. Because, to be quite honest, I have no money and I have no chance of getting anywhere. Okay, on a lonely desert beach. There's no habitation in sight, no market, only an old running dark rock of stand thickens in the damp black of earth from which sprouts the stunted palms. Not quite tall fungal growths with frond like caps, as if somebody had sculpted the idea of a tree from a mushroom. Let's see what happens. As you step onto the quay, you hear clamor, shouts, and shooting. You can see off in the distance smoke rising beyond the hill, and dots of fire flecking the horizon. Two tiny figures stand a little further down the quay, unmoving as if awaiting your approach. Okay, following this an extract from the popular diary of a Z Captain from London to Irem and what we did there before we arrived. Washed ashore on the Mutton Island and subsequent serialized the answer is death act. Blah, 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 blah. The tale of Pigmoat Isle, in which a delegation is made, choice of presented, war is declared, and most singular treasure is sought by all, and a new empire is founded by Tooth and Claw. <laughs> Chapter 1 The Delegation. The figures were rodents. To my left was Rattus Faber, wearing goggles, a blacksmith apron, and an assortment of tools. To my right, an unusually large guinea pig, wearing a helmet and a breastplate res reminiscent of nothing so much as the high Middle Ages. The rat stepped forward first and bowed. Welcome, Captain, to Rat Star Island. I am Edgar, second chief engineer of the third rat brigade. I invite you to avail yourself to food and fuel at our expense. The only cost you is a choice. The rat stepped back at precisely the same moment with what appeared to be the ease of long habit. The guinea pig scuttled forward and made a declamatory chirp. Welcome, Captain, to the Isle of Cathia. I am Lady Augusta Devereux Swinch of Blackwater Swinches. Send Chell to our King Grossmall, first of his name. I invite you to avail yourself of food and fuel at our expense. The only cost to you is a choice. Okay. Let's go ahead and talk to each of them, see what they say. Speaking to the chief engineer, I asked chief engineer to elaborate. He looked at me for a long measured moment before speaking gruffly. We came to this island to make a home for ourselves, away from London, its cats and snuffers, its rat skin suits. We came to live as citizens in our own republic. We came with our tools, our teeth, our clever hands, and we made a beautiful city by the light of the rat star that shone bright blue on Mount Ararat. <laughs> the chief engineer nodded towards a distant hill. One day we braved the depths of the chicken woods. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this is just brilliant. And from the top of Mount Ararat, we plucked the rat star to be our light, our beacon. But the pigs of Cavi saw the light, and they lusted for it. They sent armies to rule us and steal our star. We'll not prevent them to take what is ours. We will resist to our last breath. Will you join us in defeating them? Okay. Now speak to Senchal. How did an armored guinea pig manage to look regal? A night out of habit. The sun shall declare her throat and with a delicacy to rival the Duchess's own before speaking. Grace Naw, the king, our lord and sovereign, full seven months had sojourned in the sea, conquered the land, and won the southern main. 
Now no fortress against him shall remain, no city walls shall be left for him to gain, save the rats that squeaking behind the mountain. Unlikely was the lamb of our deliverance, assured will be our glories in their fall, when our lady's eye restored to the hall. Central composed herself and added, We saw truth and beauty in the light of our eye mount, as caveat. But the rats, with their guns and their chatter and their pleasant politics, stole it from us. We will subjugate them and take it back, their rabble, and we will rule them with the steel-shod velvet of our paws. Will you join us? You know what? I think I've heard enough. I'm going to... I'm going with the chief engineer. <laughs> he seemed grumpy but honest. Also, I knew all too well what a rat made weapons can do. I extended a finger to the chief engineer, who shook it grimly. Central hissed and chattered her teeth in disgust, but kept her distance. You've made the right choice. Let me show you around. One supply and one fuel. Yay. Chapter 3, A Rat in the Making. The chief engineer read, led me to the northern side of the island, skirting the chicken woods. We passed through a number of what can only be termed checkpoints as fierce-eyed rats shouldered their derringers and saluted the chief engineer. Soon we came upon a small colony, smaller than some of the infestation I had encountered in London flats. Perhaps only fifty ratus feather altogether working diligently to fortify their side of the island. The first thing I noticed was a brilliant light beaming out of a stump in the chicken wolf, about six foot high. It bathed the whole settlement in a clean blue glow and was almost too bright to look at. By its light I could see several raised mounds of earth suggesting shallow tunnels. An efficient fishing operating was set up by the water, an albino rat meaning mending nets while the other stabbed sharpened sticks into the waves. Further inland was a barracks where the sergeant barked drills and a small squadron of fighters. My arrival drew attention, and several rats paused in their work to look at me curiously. Welcome, Marina, said the chief engineer in warm and pride. It's not much to look at now, but it will be once once we rousted those cabbies. Take a stroll around while I summon the war council. With that, he vanished into one of the mounds and left me to explore. Let's go ahead and visit. Yeah, let's see. Chief Engineer led me to the northern side of the island, skirting the chicken woods. We passed through a number of what well, can only be termed checkpoints as fierce side rats and saluted the chief engineer. We soon came across a small colony, smaller well, yeah, I already read all this. Okay. Take a look at close, closer. I'm sorry, it's very late. I took a closer look at the rat star. An excitable looking rat was peering at it through smoky goggles, twitching their whiskers and making notes on paper. Blue as sapphire, but endlessly more brilliant. It was not a star, of course, but not really, but try explaining that to the others. The chief engineer doesn't want me looking too hard at him in some. She says it's better for morale, but look at it, look! She offered me her goggles. I managed to work them over just enough in one of my eyes to see the truth of what she was studying. It was a scintillac, but unlike any I'd seen before, a blue sapphire, but more brilliant. Something about the clarity of its color was tremendously soothing. The chief science officer tittered with pleasure as I handed her goggles back. Those of us who have seen to the cavity side of the island and lived to tell what there is plenty of glow there, plenty of bright and waterfall around, but nothing like this. We took this from the island center, Mount Ararat. Again, only it's not a mount, of course. More than this is a star. It's hollow, it's sweet water inside, and coral crawling up the walls of it, but nothing that glows save this. And it's ours, and no one can take it from us. So, let's, let's 
go to each. An albino rat smiled up to me from his mending work, looking daintily at this, a little shy. Chicken would float, especially when it's dried out in the zeal. So we're able to paddle out a bit and cast our nets. We come up with all sorts of things. Blind fish, crabs, sometimes a chunk of broken tentacle. But the fishing would never be so good without the rat star, he beamed. I think it only draws good fish and keeps the scary ones at bay. I know the chief science officer doesn't believe it, but I do, and that's our livelihood. Okay. Well, let's go back to the rat barrack since I didn't read that part. We were fighting an impressive odds. I approached the drill sergeant and went so far as to salute her, which earned me a grunt of satisfaction. The sergeant dismissed her troops and offered me a bit of chicken with jerky and on. There's more of us below ground, but not enough. The cavies are bigger and more of them. We're better with weapons, but we haven't got the stuff to make them with, and most of who came here are still ways and brought nothing but food, tools, and the fur on our backs. We can fish, we can nipple the chicken woods, but we can't make guns out of trees. The cabbies came with their own steamer and have the endless supplies. We raid them sometimes, but there's so few of us, and we can never hold on to territory we've gained for long. But that's of no consequence. All we want today is left in peace with our Republic and the Rat Star. Of course, that's what we want to do. Okay. Let's go to the Rat Star. Okay. Chief Engineer emerged from an the underground with a motley assortment of other rats, he introduced them as weapons experts, strategists, and field commanders. So, you're going to help us beat the cavies, he said, a hard edge to his voice, but how exactly? I can give him my advice, my strategic advantage. That's the whole thing. I don't know how these challenges work. Let's go ahead and try a very modest challenge. I offer my strategic assistance. I dressed up as one of the of one of me sailors in a mess of shabby cloth smeared with prisoner's honey and instructed him to roll around in the black hearth of the island. Soon we had our glorious mud monster sent thrashing through the chicken woods towards the cabbies. The distracted worked perfectly, the cabbies diverted their force towards a makeshift beast, leaving the rats with very little opposition as they plundered the grounded ship. They returned triumphant, as did my sailor, laughing, having had with the cabbies on merry chase, with a few hours of rat's diligence had resulted in building of a remarkable cache of weapons with which they successfully routed their enemy. The rats, after egalitarian, shared their spoils in addition to the promised food and fuel. Sweet. Two. We got ten fuel now. Now I have one Sintelac. Hill Marina. Mm. I've got one of the Veil's challenges. Okay. The House of Cavi had fallen, Marina was triumphant, all that remained was the celebrations and the continuation of our voyage. Oh, we feasted long into the night then. Yeah. First, I'm going to invite the guy to join us. Uh. 
Okay, welcome aboard. The chief engineer couldn't leave his colony, but he related the rest to his people, the Alabama rat. Cool. Now I have an albino tinkerer rat. Let's go ahead and talk. I appeal to the chief engineer's moral fortitude and sense of fair play. Perhaps Kevy suffered the loss of the light from the center of the island. Perhaps we were only trying to get it back, not steal it from the rats. The chief engineer looked troubled as he thought. We only wanted to be left alone, he said. He looked towards the Senshal, haphazardly bandaged amongst the rats and the other pers prisoners. Perhaps further negotiation is possible. As I left, I saw the albino rat timidly offering a young cabbie prisoner a piece of fresh fish. Cool. So, let's go ahead. The Vidar Z Beckham. We had eaten our fill, our businesses were concluded, it was time to continue our voyage. The end, there, you finished your diary, Rantry. Your final dregs of the rats, surprisingly good wine. They line up to salute you as you leave the victory banquet, escorting you to your ship through the foundations of their new republic. Sweet. So. We got another mascot. Yeah, we'll keep you on board. Can you cook? No. Can you be chief in engineer? No. Well, surgeon. Make you a surgeon. No. You can only be mascot. I already have one of those, so you can just be little friend. So, I think I'm gonna go ahead and manual save this. No! 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 <laughs> no! <laughs> What part of no don't you understand back? So it said every time I do. Okay, so let's go ahead and launch. And let's dock. And saving the game. Okay, cool. So now we're going to go ahead. And we're going to exit. Anyway. This has been Sunless Sea. Really cool little game. I did rip on it a little bit in the beginning because I really wasn't used to this kind of a setup for a game. And I'd have to say I really enjoyed the lore of it. I really enjoy the story. And that got really loud, but hopefully you can still hear me. <laughs> I'll see you all next time. Thanks.